Welcome friends, I am Lee Keckner. Today is day 32 of ownership, 33 days to a happier life. If you would please join me in three grounding breaths and then we'll get to the good work. If you'd uncross your legs and put your feet on the ground, put your palms down on your legs to ground yourself or up to receive and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Okay, you guys, we have two days left and we are owning our shit and the goal is to have a happier life. Today my intention is to share with you about some ideas and maybe or hoping that you allow yourself to look at yourself in a new way and allow yourself to be different in the world. You don't have to stay stagnant. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to do the same things. So today we're going to just talk about fear and love. I wrote a lot, so I'm going to read it if you bear with me, but I, I didn't want to miss any of the information. Fear or love are the only two emotions we work from the foundation blocks of our life. What is your life built on? Judgment, gossip, finger pointing, blame, that's fear. Fear is the silent and unseen killer of hopes and dreams, desires, and creation of abundance. Fear is a life crusher. Fear is our biggest obstacle. Attributes of love include patience, kindness, protection, trusting, hoping, persevering. And then we all know from 1 Corinthians, love is, not, um, love is not envious, boastful, proud, rude, self-seeking, easily angered. That is something that I am working on that is definitely based in fear. Rude, self-seeking, oh, I already said that. Easily angered, a recorder of wrongdoings. How, much, how many of us remember everything other people have done wrong and hold it against them or secretly put it in our back pocket? Um, or take delight in mean behavior. Okay, love and fear are the most powerful ways of being that you can experience. In fact, everything in your life, including every thought you think, every word you speak, every action you take falls under one of those emotions. When you begin to understand this, you can become more conscious of which you are expressing as you go about your daily life. So you could think, is this thought love-based or fear-based? Is this thing I'm about to say love-based or fear-based? Um, doing so throughout your day will help you to remain conscious and aware of how your day turns out, which will provide you with a deeper understanding and actual proof as to how the day unfolds according to how you show up. If you are working from love, things will be good. If you are working from fear, not so good. You've heard thoughts become things. The predominant thoughts that you think become things. Physical things show up. They manifest to support what you're creating from your mind. The more you focus on the things you desire that are love-based, the more those kinds of things will show up in your life. You'll see them manifest. By the same token, the more that you focus on the things that you don't want, fear-based, the things that you don't want will show up in your life. In fact, becoming consciously aware of the power of both love and fear and learning to consciously direct your thoughts, beliefs, emotions towards love, regardless of what's happening in front of you, choosing love will transform your life. Um, and then I wrote here, life is what you choose. You choose your own way, your own experience. An expression of love is a choice, just as an expression of fear is a choice. Every moment we get to decide, are we going to be stuck in our same rut and always stay in fear and bring in more stuff we don't want? Or are we going to start waking up to ourselves and going, oh, wow, I have a pattern of always saying, I'll never be good enough for that promotion. And you never will be good enough because you're telling your life how to show up for you. So start being aware of your thoughts and the things you say and how you're showing up. I thought this was interesting. Um, CNN did a poll in 2006. It was found that 86% of those polled expressed dislike, dissatisfaction in their careers. Yet the majority of them believed 
that they had no choice in the matter. Now, why wouldn't they change, change them if they were unhappy? Because they were fearful. It's been proven that career dissatisfaction is one of the greatest causes of depression, yet those who feel stuck in their careers due to fear choose to stay there. Fear keeps the majority trapped in a self-imposed prison, a lack of security, fear, failure, fear of the unknown, fear of the future based on experiences that they've already had. Ugh. Fear sucks. It is a life drainer, a dream crusher, a paralyzer. Albert Einstein said, the single most important decision any of us will ever make is whether or not to believe that the universe is friendly. And I say, it is. It's so friendly. Gabby Bernstein has that book called The Universe Has Got Your Back. The universe does have your back, but it's either supporting fear or it's supporting love. And you are going to go fast and strong, baby, when you step into love and you will get out of your ruts. Fear is our human sabotage, our man-made obstacle. Fear is our man-made obstacle. If we learn ways to practice love, compassion, joy, and equanimity, we will know how to heal the illnesses of anger, sorrow, insecurity, sadness, hatred, loneliness. Love, compassion, joy, and equanimity are the very best nature of an enlightened person. They are the four aspects of true love within ourselves and with the everyone and everything. When you have true love here, you see the world with true love. When you have fear and self-doubt, you see the world with fear and self-doubt. You are a magnificent being who has infinite creative power at your disposal, waiting for you to tap into it. Fear will keep you from it. Fear is your obstacle to be abundant. Become conscious, awaken, and use it. Simply choose love, it never fails. Oh, and I like this too. You are not a creature or a victim of circumstance. You are not the victim of some uncontrollable set of external forces. You are the creator of circumstance, and the sooner you discover and understand how true that statement is, and being consciously utilizing it, and begin consciously utilizing it, the sooner you will become empowered, to live purposely in creating the life that you want. I want to tell you guys something. I love you just because you were born. You are connected to me. We are all connected to the same God, the same energy. And I love you just because you were born and learn to love yourself and to get out there and really live. It is a freaking blast. When you live how you want to live and you don't give a shit what other people think, or what they say, I get upset when people aren't talking about me. If I hear, oh, you, they were talking about you yesterday, I'm like, yes, I'm alive, I'm speaking my mind. I'm rubbing people wrong, I'm rubbing people right. I'm alive. Let people, not everyone has to like you. It's so freeing. All day, before or after you do something, pause and ask yourself, was that love-based or fear-based? Start waking up. Don't be a robot anymore and just getting through the freaking day. Was that love-based or fear-based? Moment by moment, wake up. Observe yourself. Own your life. Realize you are the writer of your story, the boss of your time on the planet. How are you treating your employee? How are you treating yourself? Um, I got a little bit more here. From the teachings on love by Thit Not Han, if that's how you say his name. Understanding is a part of true love. Understanding. You must look deeply in order to see and understand the needs, aspirations, and suffering of the one you love. We all need love. Love brings us joy and well-being. It is a na it's a oh, I like this. It is as natural as the air. We are loved by the air. We need fresh air to be happy and well. We are loved by trees. We need trees to be healthy. In order to be loved, we have to love, which means we have to understand. For our love to continue, we have to take the appropriate action or non-action to pre protect the air, the trees, and our beloved. Now, after reading this quote, I thought, I got to thinking about my relationship and a lot of people's relationship with nature. Many times people think love is between people. But as your heart and mind open, you see that God didn't just create people. God created everything around us. So I have started loving everything around me. I see my pets in a new way. 
I see trees in a new way. I see them all through the lens of love. Oh, and I put, I see butterflies in the new way. Literally, I see butterflies now with their magnificent, beautiful, air-like, it's just beautiful. Um, I see all of them through the lens of love, through the lens of my creator. I see all of God's masterpieces, not just other human beings. Everything on the planet was created. And here's just something I'm going to rattle off kind of fast and then we're about done. But think about these things. Where do you fall on which side of these? Love is strong. Fear is weak. Love is honest. Fear is deceitful. Love gives. Love gives. Fear resists. Love forgives. Fear blames. Love is compassionate. Fear pities. Love chooses. Fear avoids. Love is kind. Fear is angry. Love creates. Fear negates. Love heals. Fear hurts. Love inspires, fear worries. Love desires, fear joneses for something. Love is patient, fear is nervous. Love is brave, fear is afraid. I'm acting them out now. Love is relaxed, fear is pressured. Love is blind, fear is judgmental. Love accepts, fear rejects. Love dreams, fear schemes. Love wants to play, fear wants to control. Love frees, fear imprisons. Let's get more to love. Not only does it feel good, you'll be happier. I think we're here to use fear as a springboard to soar deeper into love, deeper into life, deeper into the unknown, deeper into our heart racing. We are alive. Let's be alive. Okay, my quote, I drop kick fear to the curb and I step fully into the warm embrace of love. I don't live very fearful, but when I do, I'm going to take the time to look at it and see why it's fear-based so I can start moving it over to the love side because the more I am in love, the more I'm free and more I'm connected to myself and God and all the people around me and the trees and butterflies. God, we're grateful for fear because it shows us when we need to move to love. Thank you for letting us be afraid. Thank you for letting our heart pound. Thank you for putting us in situations that scare us and God. Be with us as we crush through the doors, as we kick open the doors, as we crush the little thoughts that hold us back. Let us be more in love. Let us be more with you and less with our man-made obstacles. I get um, sprinkling love and light to everyone watching and to myself. And may we move forward as powerful warriors of love. Amen. You guys, we have one more day. Oh, let me do my closing and then I'll look. Thank you so much for joining me today on day 32, and I will see you tomorrow on the final day, day 33, when we will be celebrating ourselves, or we can start right now, woo woo, celebrate ourselves that we have done this journey together. Even if you've done one thing, it's made a difference in your life. You're allowing yourself to shift. Let's shift this shit, man. Let's own ourselves, and let's have a freaking blast. I'll see you tomorrow.